I said a long time ago I have an aversion to iron oxide or rust. Well, I decided to go ahead, I don't know why, <laughs> to paint the wheels. So I had a open gallon of some white paint and it's a dull white so it's really great for an implement like this because it doesn't have to be shiny white like painting furniture. Um, clearance paint is a great way to go when you can find it. So it was a Rust-Oleum uh, professional oil-based paint on clearance for $9 a gallon where normally it's I think $39.99. Prices have gone up in paint a lot. When we started painting a lot of equipment it was about $20 to $25 a gallon and I realized that this wheel was white and it's like a truck rim and all the others are um, agricultural. So I started wire brushing them going over them last night. They got two coats of white and then I thought well this hitch won't take any time at all. Guess what? I start looking at it and it's John Deere. I called him over this morning to look at it. Had the red paint all ready to go. Good that I waited because green stuff sells for more money. <laughs> um, you can sell it cheap and fast with a quick red paint. Um, doesn't matter, you know, to me what color it is. And a lot of this stuff is painted orange or red. I think a lot of times they do the red for road safety. Maybe to match the barns, I don't know. But after looking at it more, he said, this is a John Deere running gear and I have leftover John Deere paint um, and it's the extendable uh, running gear down here. And we couldn't find an actual tag on it, but he was looking at the knuckles. Um, and I don't know if you call them U-joints or not, but all the linkage in it, John Deere. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it John Deere green. So I may or may not pick up some barn paint because I've been wanting to paint parts of our barn where the wood is good anyway. And you know, just prolong putting off, I guess, <laughs> some other work. But this board here is unpainted and it'll just look better painted. He found some iron by the side of the road and the guy had them all measured out. He had like a cultivator or something that he cut up and it's real heavy old steel, real thick, not recycled material. So these will all have to find a little place to go while I decide what to do about that. are loose that means it's going to get a bearing job anything we use anything that comes here or leaves leaves better than in the condition we got it even if we're borrowing it so it's good that he decided yes it's John Deere go ahead and paint it green because it was just going to get a quick coat of paint and now instead it's going to get a lot more maintenance that's been deferred from previous owners it's looking like there's been some wood shimming going on um, in some different areas and this old rough sawn lumber does not take nails you have to pre-drill and use um, bolts and lags so this whole thing is moving right here so underweight or somebody pulling on it that's only sitting there a half an inch so I think this whole board needs to be pushed in or just re-sistered with a longer board uh, it's real real close clearance to that front tire so, I'm looking real great today, but I don't have the yellow paint. Um, the hubs are supposed to be green, so I'm just going to continue on while I'm doing that. He needs some knife sections for the sickle bar mowers for doing the ditches, and probably extra spares on hand for the hay vine. So I'll pick up some yellow paint, and my first coat of green will be drying, and then I can get onto that. See, sometimes it's a matter of finding some original paint in an area that's been not exposed. 
like here, uh, right there. That's original John Deere paint right in there. So, yeah, this would be a lot easier to touch up now. Well, I lucked out and I found out I had some John Deere yellow stashed away from a previous project so I didn't have to run out to the store. So, that white paint worked out perfect. It made this yellow go on perfect in one coat. Um, there's some areas on the back side it may touch up uh, with a second where it meets the hub, but the hub's gonna cover it, so it really doesn't matter. But since I started out on white on the hubs, I'm gonna go over these with another coat of green. I had Trey go around in grease. Look what a great job he did. He didn't think the other side was taking grease, so I'm gonna go check that out. And interestingly, this has two grease irks on the whole thing. Uh, nothing on the king pan, just grease that in its place. And then checking out the hubs. He said it was actually the spindles were wobbling, that the hubs look good. So yeah, that didn't take any grease there. We'll have to spin that out. So, she's green now. So I got real smart today and I thought, hey, I'm gonna take my black Sharpie oil-based pen. It's a paint pen. And I touch up painted my valve stems where I got paint over them. I could have taken the time to tape them off, but I just got right into it and hadn't really thought about it. And it looked so bad, I thought, oh, we'll just put new caps on it. And then I had the idea to just paint the stem and the cap and not have to go spend any money, which is the way to go. Well, I know you guys don't always see a lot of teamwork on camera, but there is a lot of teamwork off camera. So off camera, he took care of the bearings for me and got the uh, wheels, tires back on for me today. I did the touch up paint just now over the hubs and over the lug nuts so that everything would be cohesive and not streaky or peeling off from torque wrenching on them. The thing that helps so much about our teamwork is noticing problems. So I had noticed, let me turn this camera around. There, this way I can get right up underneath and show you. This tire is basically sitting on this beam and we couldn't figure out why did they add this blocking here and raise this up. There's some sistering going on with some two by fours back here. And had I not painted this, these are things that you might not see. So this beam right here does not look like it is original to this, and I've never seen anything like that. They were trying to keep um, spacing going on here with all of this. So those runners or stringers usually just sit there anchored into these brackets, and they're not anchored in. And I thought, well, we need to get some lags in there and get it anchored in. You don't want anything tippy. Uh, there's some new boards on here that I wanted to take off that are wavy and this way and that, broken. But that's not acceptable. Do you see what he saw and then he came and showed me? Well, this is all out of whack here and it just moves, see? The whole thing is sitting too far back. That tire is supposed to be sitting between these supports right here. So we're gonna fix that. The reason they had it all jacked up is the whole thing is back on the frame farther than it's supposed to be. And for that steering and clearance to work, they had to bring it up on four by fours. So I think we're gonna undo everything that's tying it together, all the sistering. Say hi. Yeah, he wants to say hi anyway. We're going to undo all that sistering and tying it together so that we can set it back down the way it's supposed to be and see what we're going to end up with that. So he's going to bring over the Ford backhoe after we get it all undone and he can lift it up so that we can set it down where it's supposed to. Now I've said before, this old rough sawn stuff, you cannot get nails and screws through it. There's multiple sections that they just kept trying something else. 
Well, you basically have to pre-drill your holes in this old rough sawn stuff. And this is just kind of worn smooth from straw or hay being on top. The other side is totally rough, just like this. So, you got some little pieces that are not a big deal. That's not gonna mess with the strength of anything. But this here is only going two thirds of the way. So it might as well go all the way. Just looking at all the pieces, seeing what needs to go, what needs to stay. I don't see any reason uh, for this structurally to be a problem, but cosmetically, you know, maybe throw a straight one on there. So I'm gonna go to the barn and see what I've got. So sometimes a job gets finished for me in the fact that it has to get put to work. So we needed to pick up some pallets and we found a place close enough by that he could take the hay wagon and load it up with lots and lots of pallets. So that job was done and he loaded it up as far as he could without bottoming out this tire over here. So he says the whole thing had been shifted. Um, we're thinking of maybe making an extension for this or moving it forward, but moving it forward, it really needs to be an adjustable hitch. Um, we can manage it. I believe that it was probably built this way and with a short hitch for use with a smaller tractor, like a John Deere 40, 420, 430, um, or even a Ford Jubilee was very common during the time that this running gear was probably made. So I've got some red paint on standby, and that is one of the jobs that I've been getting to. But you know that I am a busy woman. I have been painting. I have been repairing. I've been farming. I've been managing rental houses. So this is as far as this is going to go for this week. So if you're going to ever want to watch this thing get totally finished, subscribe. Hit the notification bell over there on the side. And that will let you know when the next video comes out. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.